Before one could fully understand how to land an airplane, they must also understand some of the flight instruments, basic flight controls, and their operation. We'll start with the instruments, and the ones you need to know are the altimeter, the heading indicator, and the airspeed indicator. These instruments are very straightforward, and are very similar to the gauges that you might find in a car. First is the altimeter, which shows how high off the ground you are in feet. The altimeter reads like a clock, in the sense that there are two hands. The short hand tells you thousands of feet, and the long hand tells you hundreds of feet. For example, when at 1,400 feet, the short hand is in between the 1 and the 2, and the long hand is on the 4. The next instrument is the heading indicator, which is basically a compass. This instrument should be somewhat familiar to you. It shows north, south, east, and west, as well as the degrees in between. For example, on a southwest heading, the heading indicator might show you're around a heading of 240 degrees. Finally is the airspeed. This tells you how fast you're moving through the air. This is not necessarily the same thing as how fast you're moving on the ground, because this includes the wind. So if you're in the air going 90 knots, and a 10 knot wind is coming from behind you, your speed on the ground would be 100 knots. On the other hand, the same wind is in front of you, and your ground speed would be 80 knots. There are also several colors on the airspeed indicator. The red line is the never exceed speed, or the speed at which structural damage will occur. The yellow arc is only for non-turbulent or smooth air. The green arc is the normal operating speed, which is used for traveling. Finally, the white arc is the speeds when you can safely use the flaps, which we'll discuss in a little bit. The first control that we'll discuss is the yoke, which is the primary control used in flying an airplane. The yoke controls two surfaces, which are the ailerons and the elevator. Ailerons are located on the end of both wings. By turning the yoke to the left, the left aileron raises and the right aileron lowers. The right wing generates more lift, and the airplane banks or turns to the left. In simple terms, rotating the yoke counterclockwise will result in a left bank and a left turn. The same is true for turning to the right. By rotating the yoke clockwise, the right wing will lower and the plane will turn to the right. Next is the elevator, which is controlled by pushing and pulling on the yoke. Pulling on the yoke will result in a nose-high attitude, and with enough speed, will result in a climb. Pushing forward on the yoke will result in a nose-low attitude and a descent. The rudder is the control which yaws the airplane, or rotates it around the y-axis. The rudder is controlled by the pedals on the floor. The rudder is used in conjunction with the ailerons to perform a smooth or coordinated turn. The rudder pedals are also used to turn the airplane on the ground. Pushing on the right pedal steers the airplane to the right, and pushing on the left rudder pedal steers the airplane to the left. The rudder will be very important when on the ground. The next lifting surface that I will explain is the flaps. The flaps are controlled by a white lever inside of the airplane. To put the flaps down, pull the lever down, and to put the flaps up, pull the lever up. The flaps are located on the inner part of the wings and go up and down in unison. Their purpose is both to slow the airplane down and help it fly at lower speeds. This is accomplished by increasing the amount of lift produced by the wing. We will use the flaps during landings to give us the slowest landing speed possible. The final control that one must know to control the airplane is the throttle. The throttle is located right of the yoke and is a black lever. The throttle controls the RPMs of the engine, which is how fast the propeller spins. A faster spinning propeller exerts more force and can pull the airplane faster. On the other hand, a slow spinning propeller slows the airplane down. We will keep our hand on the throttle for the entire landing process. Now that we have a basic understanding of the controls used in flying an airplane, we can continue to learn how to land one. For this demonstration, we will start on a mid-field downwind for the runway. At this point, the airplane is flying level at 1700 feet MSL or above sea level. The throttle is set for 2100 RPMs. The airplane should be approximately 3000 feet away from the runway. This can be judged by checking that the runway is about center on the wing strut. Now continue flying the airplane on this path. When the airplane is after the touchdown point or the runway numbers, pull back on the throttle until the RPM gauge is at 15 or 1500 RPMs. Now look at the airspeed indicator and ensure that it displays a speed below 85 knots. Once the speed is below that, add in the first notch of flaps by pulling down on the flaps lever. 
While the flaps are going down, push forward on the yoke to counteract the nose-high attitude that the flaps are trying to make. After flying forward for approximately 30 seconds, turn the airplane to the left by rotating the yoke counterclockwise and adding some left rudder by pushing with your left foot. When you have made a 90 degree turn, which can be determined when you are perpendicular with the runway, lower the flaps another notch. Once again, keep the nose pointed down to counteract the flaps. When almost on the line that leads to the runway, make another 90 degree turn. Now you should be flying straight towards the runway. Add in the last notch of flaps by pulling the flaps lever all the way down. Start looking at the point you will be touching down. This will likely be the runway numbers. Check that your airspeed is approximately 65 knots. If you're fast, reduce the power by pulling back on the throttle and at the same time, pull back on the yoke slightly. If you're slow, add power and push forward on the yoke. As you are nearing the runway, continue to point the airplane at the runway numbers. When you get close, start looking down the runway and begin to judge how high off the runway you are. Your goal is to be a few feet off the ground. Now pull the throttle to idle and begin pulling back on the yoke. The goal is to hold the airplane off the ground for as long as possible. While doing this, also keep the runway in sight. Don't pull back so hard that you can't see the runway. The back wheels will touch down first. Now slowly pull all the way back on the yoke and keep the nose wheel off the ground. At the same time, use your right and left rudder pedals to keep you on the center line. If you veer left, push on the right rudder pedal, and if you veer right, push on the left rudder pedal. Once the nose wheel touches the ground, you can start to slow down using the brakes. The brakes are located on the tops of the rudder pedals. Put equal pressure on the tops of both rudder pedals to slow down. Congratulations, you have successfully landed an airplane.